Hello guys, welcome to another video. This time around I wanted to talk about some cards and how to fix them and uh, it's actually a, a post that uh, a video that I think it's pretty interesting because I want to give my insights uh, and you can actually discuss in the comments if you are uh, if you agree with me or if you think if you think that actually I'm completely dumb. So I wanted to talk about uh, some play styles, some cards in particular that uh, I do think make the game worse. And uh, while they enable certain style of play, I do think that uh, they are actually not uh, that good for the game uh, because they uh, hamper top, uh, flat faction of warlords uh, by default. And the first card I want to talk about is Desolated Ground and Asteroid Belt actually. I start with Extraits Belt, and I do think that this card is really strong, and I actually think that is it is fine as it is, but it can be really toxic, toxic to, when combined with the ch certain warlords and certain cards, and the card that in um, uh, that it combines really well, and that, that makes uh, Asteroids actually. Um, Terrifying experience if you are playing uh, like uh, Fail or Ornatov and they do turn one asteroids and turn two this card here that I actually dislike a lot. Uh, you are basically uh, three energy behind and there is little way you can come back from this. I do think that Desolated Ground is a card of poor design and I actually dislike it a lot. I don't think that it's uh, uh, it's a card that tests your skills, and I think that is a, a card that completely completely ruins the experience for the opponent and also doesn't um, uh, seem seems equally strong uh, for every warlord and every faction some of them are actually ampered a lot by desolate ground such as mortarion for example that wants to reach this 10 energy as quickly as possible and he has to wait nine turns uh, in normal games now but now he has to wait more because you make him lose one energy and i do think that actually this is uh, um, not a great play experience also how would I change this ground? Because you cannot uh, uh, actually uh, bump the cost to five because it it becomes uh, useless at five energy. It's uh, a little bit too much, and uh, it would become unusable. But I do think that uh, an elegant and maybe interesting way to change the late ground is actually make it three energy, and the opponent loses two energy or one energy i am not actually sure of how um, to balance it you, you need to be um, to be testing it before saying anything because because you can actually create a toxier card than before but i do think that making him lose two energy on his next turn is how this card can be improved actually because now you have to think uh, of when to play this you can play it on your second turn but it may not be that good because the opponent maybe doesn't uh, have that much to play or uh, you are not in danger of uh, anything scary coming down and then you waste is you waste actually free energy of doing nothing and you did not do not develop the board you do not deal with uh, your opponent threats uh, but this also solves a problem that I think is uh, within Desolated Ground. If you draw this card at turn 10, it actually do, does absolutely nothing. Instead, this way you could uh, make the opponent have 8 energy and now they can play 9 drops and they can play uh, 10 drops. And uh, I think that this actually becomes interesting. And uh, this card could be interesting also uh, in decks that do not actually um, um, 
want to play the long game and uh, play desperate defenses because maybe even Karn could uh, play this. He wants to smack the opponent, then on the crucial turn he smacks down a desolated ground and makes you minus 2 energy. And uh, in your next turn you are actually hampered and crippled. And I think that this could be an interesting way to change this card without make it, making it useless because I don't think that actually uh, having minus one good cards in the roster is a good thing for, for anyone. I This is card is toxic as it is right now but it could actually be improved without uh, making it completely useless. About making cards useless Another card that really triggers me and uh, makes me mm, think about how to improve this game is Desperate Defense. Because this card is disgusting and uh, it warps the meta by itself. And I, th I do think that this card needs to be changed no matter what. Because it's actually incredible the amount of stats you can put on the board. And they are no, they cannot be ignored because on frontline, and you can play two of these in the deck, and <laughs> it's so strong. And actually, uh, it uh, even uh, makes uh, some cards like Zerial Storms actually playable because you have to deal with this, and not uh, you cannot ignore the Zerial Storms, and it actually want to shoot you every every turn or this defense force becomes incredibly strong. Uh, because uh, uh, this ties, uh, you, you have to waste a turn in order to put a 6-6 on the board. You now do not waste a turn, make it, make it frontline, so the, the opponent cannot ignore it. And then uh, uh, this dies and creates another 6-6, and you have uh, only with a 1 defense force, you gained 12-12 uh, worth of stats, with the, which is actually more than uh, a 10 drop like a Hell's Fury or Shipmaster Karia or Malkador Tank whatever and I do think that this card needs to be changed uh, there are two maybe three changes that I would uh, uh, consider one is making this legendary so uh, this uh, is a one of and you cannot reliably uh, draw it and uh, play it you only have one in each game and the second one, which is always the harder to deal with, uh, it's actually um, there is a, it's actually not present. So you can uh, you can dictate the 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 pace of a game, and then uh, he plays desperate defense. And you deal with this, and now if he played horribly whole game, uh, he has no way to recover uh, other other than playing. Uh, actual frontline troops like uh, the um, um, the big uh, Gamamu, Manipul Gamamu and this could be a good way to improve this another change that I would I think is actually a little bit more interesting is draw two cards put two, two troops uh, put them into play give them frontline and can't attack. So if you want to attack with these or you pull desperate defense force and it dies or you uh, jam them and they actually lose the front line. And I think that in this way it could be balanced a bit. Not that by that much because the amount of stats that it just puts on the board is, is disgusting but actually this could uh, um, bring up something interesting like maybe putting the real storm that actually can't attack on his own and deal 7 and deal 10 uh, each turn with relentless or uh, actually maybe Hell's fury which you can tap for and deal 10 um, but I do think that this could be a change, in, an interesting change for this card. I do not think that maybe it balances it completely, but uh, could be a way to actually reduce its impact of, on, on the meta and how deck plays. And uh, another thing that 
um, could be interesting with Desper defense is uh, actually putting two troops out but with bare stats and not any effect but in this way you are not actually removing the learning a hydra problem or uh, uh, but well you are actually dealing with Coriol Zeth or uh, Karia or uh, Doombringer which I do th or defense force even which I do think are maybe the main issues and this could, ac could actually be a good way to improve this card and make it less uh, brain dead and another thing I wanted to talk about which is related to all of this rant about uh, mana manipulation is these two guys one and two because they starting with one energy more it's actually really really upsetting and while they can uh, be destroyed by uh, maybe uh, aggressive warlords they are actually incredibly annoying to, to deal with and uh, they have access to survivors me, with uh, um, Athame and uh, uh, Manifest Destiny and uh, I do think that they are just bad play experience and I would rather see them changed in some way also because they offer nothing about this uh, start with one energy more and it's m almost the same as Lucretia but Lucretia is way more oriented versus aggro and uh, the fact that I can turn one asteroids turn two uh, do um, supply lines which I do think that is another card that is maybe a little bit too strong and uh, uh, abandon supplies uh, and then uh, they can play a turn 6 Doombringer it's uh, incredibly annoying um, to deal with and I actually do think that uh, uh, they might need to be changed o although if you change uh, Desolated Ground and uh, Desperate Defense I do think that they become much less annoying to deal with um, then another thing I wanted to cover is night houses. I play, I played a lot with uh, uh, Grave Walker, and before him I played with Orlac. And I do think that uh, they have been nerfed quite a bit, but they still need to touch some things. First thing uh, that I need, I think they need to touch is House of Irony. This card is disgusting and actually. Uh, it's an incredible amount of damage plus healing plus uh, uh, tempo that you gain with one energy and this needs to be increased by at least three energy two energy uh, so make it three energy sorry um, because this card is incredibly strong and you can pull uh, the graviton combo even if he, he, it is three energy but uh, now you need two drilling sites instead of one and I actually do think that uh, this card is too too good and I don't I don't know actually why knights have been so down on the ladder in this in these days because I do I do think that they are really strong I mean I I'm not uh, uh, the best player in the world I have 76 percent with uh, Grave Walker still and over 80 percent with uh, a Castus uh, uh, Grave Walker um, and this card needs uh, just to be nerfed it's too good to not include in every single night deck um, then we we have another card that they could touch which is Aulus Maccabius and make it uh, or plus 2 plus 0 plus 3 plus 0 and draw a card or plus 4 plus 0 and do not draw a card because this card is uh, incredibly strong when compared to similar cards from other uh, factions I mean just look at um, Eternal Rivalry which is basically the same thing 3 energy plus 2 plus 0 this is double the amount of damage and draws a card for one more energy it's 
incredibly strong and or you buff these kind of cards in every other faction or you nerf this I do not think that there is uh, another way between and actually be it being plus 3 plus 0 is not uh, making it un unplayable and I do think that it's a cool way to touch this card Drakiavak is another card that I think it's a bit too strong and uh, I do not I don't know if uh, they need to touch this card making it uh, for attack uh, actually makes it, it makes it mega torable and uh, I do I don't actually know if this is a good thing or, that, or a bad thing because uh, knights could actually bounce their own uh, Drakiavak in order to gain an another 5 health and I don't think that uh, this could be a good change maybe making it 5 health uh, could be better because right now it's like uh, 3 mana heal 5 uh, which is the Caliban card which actually even has a drawback heal 5 to a friendly unit so it, it's this card plus a 5-6 for 2 more energy so you're actually playing playing a 5-6 for 2 energy and you can actually draw a weapon or uh, gain for energy and uh, for plasma if you are low on plasma and uh, this flexibility is a thing that it's incredible with Drakevac I think is uh, beside Byroni it's the best card in the, the night uh, roster then uh, talking about knights we uh, I've seen the cards that they need, they need to to address, uh, but they need also to address Hell Raider, which I do think is a incredibly cool card. This card is amazing. The artwork is fantastic and uh, it's actually actually very interesting. But they need to change uh, how it works, and I do think that actually making it four energy and deal and gain terror and plus one plus oh is a cool way to um, help with her raider because actually they can control uh, the battlefield a little bit better even without weapons um, also i do think that together with a raider they need to touch shocklands and uh, tempest warblade because these are the cards that actually can make uh, a knight uh, a melee knight viable, viable. Tempest Warblade needs to come down in cost uh, maybe 5 energy 4 energy even I mean it's strong but 6 energy is a, bit, a little bit too much I do not think that Akaton Claw is actually a card that you want to put in a melee knight deck because you do not have that, mu that much of a plasma uh, generation and uh, I think that you want to be smacking with uh, Reaper Chain Fist. I, uh, I do not think also that this card is going anywhere. I don't know how to fix uh, such a card. It's, uh, this, it's underwhelming to say the least. But I do think that actually a Cat and Claw could be fine as it is if you let a Knight gain Plasma. Uh, over and over and over you maybe have uh, not understand what uh, they can do so uh, I do think that Hecaton Claw is fine as it is making this uh, cost less actually improve you the chances of uh, doing the Hecaton Warblade combo and I do not actually think that this is a good thing but I do not, do not know how to fix this card without uh, actually making it cost, cost less because 6 energy is too much for what it does I mean plus 2 plus 0 to your warlord is we already saw um, the Kabanda card is 3 energy and this lasts until your next turn while this does not and I do know why this does not also you are paying 6 energy and then you are paying 2 plasma and it's not cost effective by any means uh, I mean this does more damage and costs half as much 
there is actually no sense in playing Tempest Warblade. So if you actually want to make melee knights viable, fix this card and make it make it, make it good. And also another card that needs to be touched is Shocklands, because again, compare with with Battle Cannon. Battle Cannon is three damage. You do not need to attack, and it costs two plasma. Okay, it costs more plasma, but Shocklands needs you to attack. And you, if you actually do not kill it, you take the damage. And this is incredibly bad. They yeah. need to improve shock class. I do think that actually could be a, a cool way to improve this card is make it first strike and kill, cleave one. So that actually uh, this can become uh, a little bit better. And uh, you can still deal cheap damage to the enemy warlord, or you could make uh, um, first strike um, uh, um, plus plus o, plus one plus o, and actually let it last until your opponent's turn, so that uh, at least you are a little bit stronger if something uh, attacks you back. Okay, so this was my ranting about uh, knights, and I really hope that they make uh, uh, melee knights viable, because I want to play her rider so bad. Uh, this artwork is incredibly cool, and I do think that actually it could be a good way to play Elspeth War. Um, so yes, I this was this were my thought about. Uh, uh, knights in general then uh, what should we cover um, well I could cover Perturabo but I do not know how to fix this card the whole uh, Iron Warriors roster is not amazing and this actually is the only thing that holds it together but I do think that actually there is th something to be done with Alpha Legion because Exodus is just maybe it's maybe the best warlord in the game. Uh, so they need to change something in uh, Alpha Legion, I think. And actually, I think that uh, there are cards that are really too good. And Otilon score, for example, it's incredibly strong. This card is amazing, but Changing a, a nine cost card is uh, not uh, where I do think that uh, nerfs to Alpha Legion could be going. I do think that uh, they need to touch a bit the stun component because it's incredibly toxic. They need to change Lambda Thunderock to deal three damage and not four. And uh, I I do play Exodus and I enjoy it a lot, but Lambda Thunderhawk is the, uh, a card that outshines every other uh, uh, Thunderhawk card in the game, basically. It's incredibly strong. And then I think that making one of many heal 4 instead of 5 is actually more interesting. Because it hurts their survivability a tiny bit it's not a, gi a gigantic nerf like it would be making it heal three, da three uh, health but I do think that they need to touch something here and uh, these are two cards that I think are a bit too good and also another card that uh, they could touch is Serpent Squad and make it a 4-4 because this card, when played with uh, um, the escape vent, it uh, cr grows uh, incredibly fast and, it, in, and it's actually very annoying. And now we can actually talk about a card that will make uh, a lot of enemies. <laughs> uh, this card is Drilling Sight. I get I get it why everyone loves Drilling Sight, I love it too, but this card is too good. This card lets you play uh, incredibly strong combos without any reason, and uh, 
it fixes your mana when you need it and uh, it lets you do incredibly strong turns and incredibly good stuff i mean if uh, we uh, like take serpent squad for example you have serpent squad you make it stealth with uh, you have five energy right you make it stealth okay you have a six six with stealth you included a card that otherwise is useless like escape vent in your deck in order to make serpent squad work so i'm fine with it being strong but now you play drilling site and then you play two traps that you created earlier and now you have a nine nine that is stealth and, and you could play also arvus lighter which uh, is a neutral card available to, to everyone and this gives you another energy so you can play this and draw a card with maybe lectidio divinitatus and this goes on for every war i mean fail do we want to talk about how toxic fail is with uh, drilling sites you can play a turn five chicken with uh, the abandoned supplies and then you play a uh, desperate defense on turn five and you can do nothing about it because he has fucking drilling sites this card is too good it allows for too much combo and gives so much tempo and i think that this card is needs to be fixed i don't know actually how i mean gaining one energy i uh, really hampers this card because it's worse than an out attack uh, than a counter attack for mechanicum because you include this instead of uh, drawing it for going second so i don't actually know how to improve this card but this is not okay if you think that drilling site is okay uh, i respect your opinion but i do think that actually if you see this card in maybe 80 percent 90 percent of the decks on the ladder there is a reason the card is too strong you do not even need to build your deck uh, in order to make the link side work they work on their own they make your deck work and they actually um, um, let players uh, build a worse energy curve because they have drilling sites and uh, i do not think that uh, drilling site is a card that need to stay as it is I, uh, and i i get it that you love the drilling site i love drilling site too i have it in a lot of decks but uh, there is not uh, fail without drilling site it's okay it's not toxic this warlord it's toxic because of drilling sites because he can de desperate defense and now drilling site ha uh, uses ability and they have flank and kill your stuff that otherwise is gonna kill uh, fail so i actually do think that the drilling site needs to to be nerfed i don't know how also because arvus lighter exists and arvus lighter if you change drilling site cost to one this card is actually way better so and flexible so i don't know how to fix the drilling sites but uh, i i think that this card has a problem and uh, if you actually go towards every deck uh, that is in the top uh, decks of the month i mean knights they play two drilling sites exodus plays two drilling sites or one drilling site as uh, in order uh, to for it to work better and it really depends on the build but i think that one drilling site with exodus is more than fine um word eaters played with drilling sites perturabo plays a lot with drilling sites mortarium needs drilling sites really badly um i do think that ariman plays drilling sites but i'm not sure about it so i um, uh, I'm not gonna say anything that I'm not sure. I do not play Thousand Sons actually. Uh, Ultramarines play, play with drilling sites. Um, Raven Guard, they have Nikona, which plays really well with drilling sites. Um, 
Blood Angels plays really, really well because of Judgment of Angels. Um, White Scars play, play incredibly well with Drilling Sights. Even Iron Hands in order to speed up uh, their uh, slow playstyle. Defenders of Caliban I do not think that they actually play that well with Drilling Sights. But I mean there are a lot of decks that actually play really well with this card and for some of the decks that uh, are actually in the top uh, decks like Exodus, Knights, uh, some World Leaders decks uh, they play this card and this card is part of their game plan so I do think that this needs to be addressed uh, Feel free to dislike the video if you think that the drilling site is actually okay. Then, uh, uh, what are we gonna touch? Another, the last faction, maybe. Oh, a, a card that it's been on uh, radars for a lot, uh, for a tiny bit. Forbidden protocols. Well, I do play this card because I actually play uh, six in the ladder. And I think that actually this card is incredibly strong, but uh, I still uh, do not know if it's worth nerfing, nerfing because it actually uh, most of the time it gives uh, average buffs. And uh, it really depends on what you put this into. But uh, I don't think that you actually need to uh, build your deck in order to this to function properly and uh, mm, sometimes it's gonna do plus one plus one and mark of chaos and whatever it's plus plus two plus plus one um, it's actually worth uh, maybe one energy and sometimes it's gonna pull like two mark of chaos plus two plus two uh, Ward, uh, Bloodthirst, and uh, all the crazy stuff, but the real thing is that this card is actually based on luck. And uh, if you get mad at this card, uh, um, and you play it, uh, you actually will uh, understand that it's actually not that good. And sometime, for example, I play a War Room. War Room is this card right here. Um, a tra training cage, pardon, training cage six, uh, in order to boost the troops in my hand and then play them. And I do think that actually most of the time I play um, command bridge, I fetch for uh, 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 for cage and not for uh, protocols unless I already play at a cage or I am too far in the game to play it. So. Um, this card, I think, is uh, really strong, not broken yet, or at least uh, we should see a little bit more. It's not like uh, day one flame cannon, which was uh, disgusting to say the least. Um, so yes, these were my thoughts about uh, some of the, the cards that I do think uh, are worth touching. And uh, uh, I'll see you guys uh, next time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, feel free to let me know if you agree with me or not.